everybody living at the surface is living on borrowed time. I'm not gonna lie, I'm eating that bird and that rat. You don't even eat meat. You don't even deserve this. I'm, yeah, I'm catching them lacking and I'm taking advantage of them. I'm not gonna lie. And today we got, what if Earth got kicked out of the solar system by rogue Earth? Um, let me see if I can really like lock in. Let me lock in with my scientific knowledge. It's gonna get mad cold cause we not gonna have, um, we not gonna have the sun. It's gone. That's all I know. Um, if there's a mod in here, could you put up a parlay? Because I'm not cursing. I'm not cursing. I'm not cursing. Uh, let's just get this going. You already know the vibes. One curse, three push-ups. Um, be sure to check out my other reaction channels. I'm not cursing. It's his fault every time I curse. It's his fault every time I curse. It's his fault every time I curse. Let's just get it going. The night sky seems peaceful and orderly. Okay. But in reality, stars are careening through the galaxy. This guy has a beautiful voice. Pause. At speeds of hundreds of thousands of kilometers per hour. Not bound okay. by static formations, but changing neighborhoods constantly. Fortunately. Oh, yeah, because the sun is like, it's like a comet and like everything's like following it. I remember seeing that. I remember seeing Space that. is big. And so the stars of the Milky Way are very unlikely to hit us. Unfortunately, they don't have to hit anything to make us have a really bad time on Earth. And there are already stars starting to get very close. I, I never believe space people when they say that. NASA will be like, warning, meteor in dangerous caught pursuit to America. And the whole time, it'll take the meteor 17,000 years to reach Earth. It's like, they'll be like, black hole incoming. Meanwhile, that hole is like 300 years away. It's like, bro... I don't care. I'm not a Viltrumite, bro. I'm not even gonna be here. Oh, this is really cool. To understand how dangerous stars are to us, we need to talk Love about you. gravity. Talk gravity attracts every piece of matter to every other piece of matter in the universe. Okay. You are attracted by an atom a million light years away and vice versa. Okay. Luckily, this force gets weaker over distance, and it also depends on how massive something is. Okay. So things that are close and are very massive are more attractive, winning the cosmic tug of war. This way, massive things define how smaller things behave around them. Okay. The sun makes up 99.75% of all the mass in the solar system, and so it shapes the behavior and orbits of everything else in it. That makes Billions sense. Billions of years ago, after the sun was born, the solar system was a chaotic and dangerous place as the planets were formed from countless little pieces that collided constantly. But over the eons, a stable balance emerged. Today... Isn't that crazy, though? Isn't the concept of that crazy, though? I'm not even trying to get religious here because like I'm, I'm personally Christian myself, but like, bro, the fact that all the pieces fell into place for the earth to not only be a planet, but also have a freaking atmosphere that is so dense and perfectly tuned for it to have life and for life to be good enough, long enough for us to be where we are right now. That is is insane that's like actually ridiculous to think about most planets and as like this the earth is here because of like chemicals and stuff like what asteroids have settled into safe and predictable orbits we have the inner and outer planets the asteroid and kuiper belt and at the edge the oort cloud a giant sphere of comets orbiting slowly in cold storage okay we really don't want this balance to be disturbed let me in if another star came too close to us, its gravity would pull on everything in the solar system like a... Nah, don't worry, guys. I got it. Oh, my God, bro. I get it. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Like, check me out. Don't even... Like, what'll happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, the star will be getting closer. Shoot, I got it. <laughs> Take two. See, the star will be getting closer, and I'll be like, I got it. You ladies safe? You did off the stage? My fault. Spoiled. Boo. Are you booing me through the chat? Okay. Yeah, my fault. I was just trying to aura farm. The ladies ain't safe. 
You right. Toddler messing up the Wait, 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 now you're right, now you're right. I meant you right, as in I concede, as in I concede. ...present order of the planets and asteroids and comets. This isn't some imaginary danger. Some 70,000 years ago, a red dwarf, brown dwarf binary system passed through the Oort cloud and messed things up. Okay. It might even have sent a deadly onslaught of asteroids our way. But it could take... I never believed this stuff, bro. ...two million years until those visitors from the Oort cloud arrive in the inner solar system. <coughs> but there's a much bigger problem on the horizon. That bird is not paying attention, bro. Legs crossed on the desk is absolutely insane. Gliese 710, a red dwarf with about half the mass of the sun, is currently headed towards the solar system. In about a million years, it'll pass. See, that's what I'm saying, bro. A million years, shiver me timbers, bro. Like, game. Pass through the Oort cloud and become the brightest star in the night sky. A close flyby like this would unfold over hundreds of thousands of years, disrupting the orbits of millions of objects in the Oort cloud considerably. If we're unlucky, it will trigger a new period of planetary bombardment similar to the early solar system. The night sky could be filled with comets and asteroids raining down on the inner solar system. The larger ones could cause dinosaur-level mass extinctions and would be bad for the stock market. It would be bad for the stock market. And I might not post that day. But it could get much worse. The galaxy is an intense place, and stars get close to each other regularly. Okay. So it is possible that a star could come much closer and not just pass us, but fly directly through the inner solar system. This okay. would be very bad in the extreme. Because the gravity would cook it, right? The chance of another star colliding with the sun is astronomically unlikely, but that isn't what we're worried about. Talk to me. If another star were to pass by about as close as the Earth is from the sun... It grabbing my pearls. You think you could stop me from grabbing your pearls if I wanted them? Really? The pearls are on your neck because I'm allowing them to be on your neck, twin. What are we talking about? I'm snatching everyone in chat's chain, bro. Not a single chain in this chat is staying unsnatched. I'm, I'm letting y'all know that right now. It could easily... No, no, you ain't. Domingo, you're Mexican. I'm snatching your sombrero, bro. Jet the Earth from the solar system. The odds of such an event are estimated to be around 1 in 100,000 in the next 5 billion years. Small, okay. but not absurdly so. As we discussed in another video, there seem to be billions of rogue planets doing their own thing in the galaxy, and this is one way to make them. <coughs> so if this were to happen with an average red dwarf, what would happen on Earth? kicking Earth out of the solar system. Okay. As the star enters the solar system, a small orangish dot appears in the sky that grows bigger. That flick is crazy. Oh, you can't even see it. There's like a star behind her. This flick is tough. What's the caption? Um, post it up like this because this star went a long distance. There you go. That was kind of, that was kind of. And bigger for months, eventually. I cursed. <sighs> look, look, look. Look, 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 give me a second chance. Y'all always know, y'all always know it's two chances, bro. It's always two chances. It's always two chances. Plus, I got another caption. Look, look. <clears throat> Anytime someone take a flick of me, they not a comet, but they really shooting stars. There you go. That's that's better. It's becoming visible during the day. It okay. would get bigger and much brighter than the moon. Too bright to look at directly the night sky would be filled with an eerie red glow. After a few months, it would start shrinking. That would look like the infinite Sukuyomi. Again. But so would the sun. Over okay. a few years, the sun slowly grows smaller in the sky, and with it, warmth and light start to dis- Bro, that would be terrifying, bro. Terrifying! Debate. All around the world- You got 15K on me cursing? Just to spite you specifically, I'm not cursing. Let me As the days turn dark, the final winter of humanity would begin. I bet all my bits, yo-yo, please don't curse. I'm locked. I'm locked. I'm locked. I'm locked. I'm here. The po I got 20k on yo-yo. No, I'm not! Polar ice caps begin to grow and spread while plants shrivel and die. Plants? Forests freeze and animals die in droves. As the Earth passes the orbit of Mars, the average surface temperature has plummeted to near minus 50 degrees Celsius. Good God. From space, Earth begins to look like an icy moon, the blue-green surface becoming the pale gray-white of death. 
As global infrastructure breaks down, people huddle together indoors, burning what they can for warmth as the temperature continues to drop, counting the days until they'll be out of food which no longer grows. Yeah, because, like, it's just too cold. Everybody living at the surface is living on borrowed time. I'm not gonna lie, I'm eating that bird and that rat. You don't even eat meat. You don't even deserve this. I'm, yeah, I'm catching them lacking and I'm taking advantage of them. I'm not gonna lie. I, I need way more protein than you, bro. Time. By the time Earth reaches Jupiter's orbit, surface temperatures sink to minus 150 degrees Celsius. God! Lower than the coldest ever recorded temperatures in Antarctica. Needless to say, by now... At least global warming won't be a problem no more. The polar bears will be fine. Almost everyone is dead. With the stars, because all my N-words, the sun. Dang, that was tough. That was way better. That was way better. That was way better. Without the energy from sunlight to evaporate water, clouds don't form and the water cycle stops. The polar oh, ice wow. caps eventually touch at the equator and the oceans become covered in a thick layer of ice. As more and more of its heat leaks out, more water freezes onto the bottom of the ice sheet. The concentration of salt in the deep ocean grows, poisoning most animals that survived here. Dang. Although around hydrothermal vents, communities of extremophiles might adapt even to these circumstances. Yeah, I'm like those. That, that's going to be me. Deep below the surface, some bacteria would not notice much of any. That's not good for mermaids, Ari. I'm not going to lie. Global warming is cooking you, bro. ...of this as they're... You go, you the type of mermaid to swallow plastic or something. No cap, you have like a bottle in your throat. Still kept warm by the radioactive decay of elements in the Earth's core. As the Earth reaches the orbit of Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, the Sun is still the brightest star in the sky, but it's one among many, with stars now visible during the day. The temperature is now... That would look beautiful though. ...barely 40 degrees Celsius above absolute... Yo, this would be a cool plot for a movie. I think someone should make a movie out of this, bro. This will be tough. Zero below the freezing temperature of the gases in the atmosphere. A weird spectacle, enjoyed by no one unfortunately, unfolds as the atmosphere turns into nitrogen and then oxygen snow. Over a few years, it's deposited into an icy 10 meter thick sheet all over the planet's surface with only a thin whisper of gas remaining. The frozen corpses of flora and fauna are buried beneath them. As Earth leaves the solar system, it becomes a rogue planet, traveling alone Damn, we gonna fall off like Pluto? through the dark, lifeless and in solitude. But weirdly enough, there is hope. <laughs> Humanity would not be surprised by this potential extinction event. We'd notice it thousands of years in advance. There's not a lot we could do to stop a star, but we could prepare. Most of us would perish, but a few million could survive in Oh, we'd make like super cities and like preserve everything. Huge artificial complexes powered by geothermal and nuclear energy, possibly even fusion if we can learn to use the ice around us for power. Here, humanity might survive for hundreds of thousands of years. At some okay. point, we would become used to our circumstances and new generations would watch documentaries in disbelief about the time we had our own star and could walk the surface of Earth. And at some point, we might decide to look. Yo, so we just lost all fashion sense though? Cause these fits suck. This fit is whack. How did the apocalypse cause that? What? Bro, did Tim stop existing? For another home. <coughs> if the Earth were lucky enough to pass by another star with a habitable planet, we could try to make a fresh start. Space flight, oddly enough, would become very easy without the atmosphere in the way. So it's not unthinkable that the last survivors would leave Earth behind and try again on a new planet. Just to make a Ford F-150 and cook that planet too. Crazy. Around a new star. Maybe one day, thousands of... I would have better fashion if Bloom dropped. Bloom dropped soon, you know what I'm saying? Soon. Real soon, bro. Real soon. Years later, the descendants of humanity will tell legends about Earth's ancient past. Stories of our lost home of a mysterious icy planet floating alone and empty through the dark of space. Well, that was a beautiful video. Oh my God. What? Oh, this is tough. Yeah, I'm locked. We're, we're watching more of these. We're watching more of these. We are definitely watching more of these. But hey man, uh, that's gonna be my reaction. I hope you guys liked it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. That's gonna be it from me. Peace.